Hi, Ben Carpenter here. I'm going to talk to you about the best foods for fat loss and specifically the best carbohydrates for fat loss. Those of you who have watched my videos uh, up to this point may be slightly confused at the angle that I'm taking with this video because in a previous video that I've made called flexible versus rigid dieting, I showed that the most important factor for weight loss was caloric total and macronutrient balance basically means the research that I quoted in that video showed that if two groups of visual individuals had their calories and macronutrient intake standardized, it didn't matter whether they consumed a high sugar or a low sugar diet, weight loss would be similar amongst both groups. So although people look at things like glycemic index, glycemic load, insulin index, etc., etc., to try and evaluate quality of carbohydrates, calories are always going to be the most important factor. So this has been demonstrated by um, a couple of doctors, one doing something called the Twinkie diet and someone doing a junk food diet, which showed that as long as they were eating in a caloric deficit, it didn't matter that they were eating Twinkies and takeaway food, like fast food, as long as they were in a caloric deficit, they could still lose weight. So make sure you understand this. Calories are the most important factor. Trying to evaluate carbohydrates within that is less important than calories in general. So, what angle am I going to take with this video? So, the shortfall with this research is that everything in this research has to be controlled, which means to feed two groups of individuals um, quantities of food which are matched for caloric intake, matched for carbohydrates, matched for protein, matched for fats, Everything is measured out in portions and given to them. Now, in the real world, most people fall victim to something called appetite, which means unless someone is measuring your food portion, giving it to you, and you're not allowed to eat more or less than the exact portion of food they've given to you, there are going to be days where you feel hungrier than others. Um, you are going to overeat more on certain days, undereat on certain days, etc., etc. So, there's something called the satiety index. This was developed by Susanna Holt, PhD, back in the 90s. The satiety index, what it did was it gave people, um, it, it let people eat 240 calories of a certain food, then there was a two hour window, then they could go and eat from a buffet. This is described as ad libitum eating, which means you're allowed to eat at your pleasure. So what they did was using white bread as the yardstick, they fed you, let's talk about you. We fed you 240 calories from white bread. Then after two hours, you went to a buffet and ate ad libitum as much as you wanted. And then what they do is see how much you ate and then concluded how filling white bread was. So white bread was used as the yardstick. So in the numbers I put at the bottom of the screen, white bread is classed as 100%. Anything lower than 100% means it was less filling. Anything higher than 100% means it was more filling. Okay? Anything lower than 100 is less filling. Anything more than 100 is more filling. So, in the first group of foods that Susanna Holt studied, this is the bakery column, baked goods. So, donuts, cakes, croissants, despite having a higher fat content, typically, than white bread, were shown to be less filling. So, to the IIFYM crowd out there, if it fits your macros crowd, yes, you could eat your portion of carbs and fats from these foods, but if it makes you hungrier over the course of the day, it's gonna make your diet harder to adhere to, harder to be compliant with. Realistically, if you are fuller, you are going to make, it's going to be easier for you to eat at a caloric deficit rather than trying to struggle with feelings of hunger all day. So in the second group, we are looking at snacks. Snacks, you can see that out of all of them, popcorn had the best effect on satiety. Now, the reason for this is possibly because popcorn is very, very light. So for you to eat 240 calories of popcorn, you have to eat quite a lot of popcorn, which is probably why, I say probably, probably one of the main reasons why it has such a large effect on satiety. 
So in terms of weight loss foods, let's say you've got your carbohydrate quota. Popcorn may be a good choice for you to fill up if you're someone that struggles with appetite. Okay, so next group, cereals. Um, as you can see, porridge was the winner from the cereal group. So muesli is often very similar to porridge, but with the addition of nuts and fruits. But it didn't have as good an effect as porridge on its own. So in terms of appetite, porridge appears to be the most filling out of the cereals that she studied. So protein. I'm not going to talk about protein a lot because in this study we only have a few sources of protein. Whereas if you look at all the other foods, they tend to be more carbohydrate rich. So ideally we would have more fishes, more meats, and we'd be able to, to look at um, variances within that um, subregion. But essentially in this, fish ranked as the best. Now probably the reason for this is because the fish used is white fish. So like popcorn, you have to eat a higher quantity of white fish than a red meat or an oily fish to hit that caloric quota. So it's more quantity of food for that allotted 240 calories. So carb rich, this, these, these are carb rich foods which don't fall into baked goods, sweets, fruits, etc. the other categories. Now you can see here that one thing stands out much more than all the other foods and that's potatoes. So potatoes were out of all the foods which were measured Potatoes have the best effect on satiety. So if you have, let's say 200, um, you have 200 grams of carbohydrates per day allotted to you within your macronutrient goals. If you ate those from potatoes, you should have a better effect on your appetite than any of the other foods that were studied if your individual response is the same as those in the study. So potatoes out of everything had the best effect on appetite. And then the last group is fruits. Now, fruits, because of their sugar, often have a bit of a, a bad reputation. So people look at fructose, they perhaps misquote research on fructose, etc., etc. They'll look at um, fructose content within certain foods, so which fruits have a higher sugar content or a lower sugar content, etc., etc. This looks specifically from an appetite perspective. So if eating 240 calories standardized from fruit, you have a better effect on society from having apples and oranges versus having something like a banana. So if you're allowed 240 calories of food, apples and oranges will have a better effect on appetite than a banana, or at least it did in this study. So here is our conclusion. The important things to note from this this potatoes and french fries both are from potatoes but food preparation is going to make a big difference here you can see from the numbers that there's a vast difference in in the two so you have to be very very cautious in trying to extrapolate this so just because potatoes are filling doesn't mean that any kind of potatoes are filling doesn't mean you could eat chips or french fries or crisps or whatever and assume that they're as filling as potatoes um, all the foods that are in this um, study have shown how they were prepared, what brands they bought, etc, etc, to make sure that it's fair. So what I'll do is I'll quote the study at the bottom. You can have a look at it and that way you can see what foods they were using. I don't want people to look at the foods here and extrapolate it and try and apply it to their own. So, for example, if you tested 10 batches of cookies from different brands, some will have a better or lesser effect on appetite. So it doesn't mean that all cookies are exactly the same. It's just this brand of cookies or cakes or croissants or whatever that they tried. So what are the best sources of carbohydrates for fat loss? In clinical evidence, doesn't matter whether it's high sugar or low sugar, as long as calories are matched. In the real world, the best carbohydrates for fat loss will be the ones that provide the best effect on appetite which make the rest of your dietary adherence easier to stick to so if you fed potatoes you were fed potatoes and for the rest of the day you felt full so it was easier for you to eat at a caloric deficit that 
in a way would be a better carbohydrate for fat loss than if you ate the same caloric total from croissants and spent the rest of the day feeling hungry because it would be harder for you to stick with your diet. Anyone who does prolonged periods of dieting or aggressive periods of dieting will know that at times fighting appetite is hard. Therefore, eating foods that have the best effect on satiety gives you the best fighting chance that you're going to be able to stick with your caloric deficit and essentially hit the end goal, which is your fat loss. So I hope you found the video helpful. Um, please feel free to give feedback, ask questions, etc., etc. Um, on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training, or my Twitter page, which is BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching. Bye.